This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Link Format Yu-Gi-Oh! Combo Tutorial video, and this time it is going to be another Dragoonity Combo Tutorial for the Link Format Combo Potentialities of this deck and what you should be looking to do when structuring your play lines if you want to play this deck on any sort of level in Link Format. Now, this combo is going to be a little bit more extensive of one. This one is Ravine Flank Soul Charge. It is one of the Ravine Flank Soul Charge combos, and in fact, it's probably like the only good Ravine Flank Soul Charge combo that we have access to. Now, in the previous combo tutorial video, I told you that Mistleton is really the only additional extender that you have for making like decent turn one combos happen because you can't open Ravine Zephyros anymore. That requires two extra deck monsters to be summoned before you make a Tum. You can't use Garuda or Instant Fusion for Mavelis alongside Ravine Flanks because, again, that requires you to summon Vajrayana and Gaydarg before summoning a Tum. Um, to make any sort of combo happen and that's just not possible under the link rule set because you can only summon One extra deck monster at a time from your extra deck You can summon them from graveyard as many times as you want into your main monster zones or back from your banished pile Whatever, but you can't go straight out of the gate into those types of cards So the only other extender we have that actually allows plays to be possible is soul charge And I really kind of wish that soul charge would be either banned or at a higher count on the ban list uh, because like it feels like this card would really like support the beginnings of link format very well in Konami's eyes It'd be like ooh, people get to bring back their stuff. It's gonna make people really want to make our like these link monsters uh, But I digress but at the time of me filming this video the only decent generic link monster We have access to for Dragoonity combos is deco talker Basically deco talker is kind of all right. It's a generic one that benefits us to a certain degree but it ultimately just sucks. It doesn't really do what we need it to do. Now, basically, it's because of the fact that it's a Link 3. What we need for this deck to have any sort of Link format combo potential, like, further of what this combo provides, is we need a generic Link 2, or even a Wind-specific or Dragon-specific Link 2, that has Link markers that point down. Proxy Dragon points to the sides, so it is not usable for any sort of, like, extensive combos. But if we had a Link 2 that had two markers that point down in either way, if it was diagonal downs or a diagonal and a straight down, it would be, you know, much more reasonable because three monsters is way too much for Dragoonies to invest into a resource. But for a generic Link 2, that's basically just giving up making one of your level 8 synchros, like, in the mid-combo string, which means that you can actually dedicate more of your potential, like, like combo, like, cards into a bigger board itself rather than just doing things like looping omegas and stuff like that which is basically what this deck has been like resigned to in terms of what this combo is now ravine flank soul charge used to be like infinite in terms of its possible like outcomes things you could do things you could include but now unfortunately it's basically just only lumped down to this one specific combo that i'm about to show you now which is probably the best combo honestly um this is probably the best way to be using these resources until we get access to a generic Link 2 that, again, like I said, points down. But anyway, I've rambled on long enough. This combo starts with activating Ravine and discarding your Phalanx and adding your Ducks to hands. Now, this is still a pretty damn good combo in terms of uh, what it allows you to do, and it's a combo you could do this format as well. Like, you could do it right now, or you could do it in Link format, because basically you just adapt the order of how you're doing things to make it work for Link format. But... So you go Ducks Phalanx and you synchro those into your Dragoonity Knight Gaydurg up in your extra deck monsters zone. Now your Gaydurg is going to activate its effect and you're going to add Mist Valley Baby Rock from deck to hand and then discard it. The Baby Rock will special summon itself via its own effect. And then you'll synchro with the Gaydurg in your extra monster zone and the Baby Rock you just summoned into your first Cyframe Lord Omega. Now Cyframe Lord Omega can banish itself, removing itself from the extra monster zone, and then during your next turn it will come back to your main monster zone. That is a ruling that has been confirmed in the master rule set for Link format. Some people were like debating whether or not that's actually the way it works. Yes, that's been confirmed as a thing for a long time. If Stardust negates a card and comes back, it goes into the main monster zone. If Cypher Lord Omega leaves the field, comes back, it goes into the main monster zone. Any extra deck card 
that leaves the extra deck monster zone, whether it be banishing temporarily like Farfa or Omega or whatever, or if it goes to graveyard and comes back, they can go in the main monster zone. So anyway, you're going to use Omega to banish itself, take a card out of your opponent's hand, and now you've vacated all your zones. Now we're going to activate this soul charge. We're going to soul charge for four here. So we're going to soul charge for the Gatorg, for the Ducks, the Baby Rock, and the Phalanx, all of them at once, and take 4k life. Uh, but now we have our extra deck zone open, and we've got everything we need to do going forward for some good plays to happen. Now the Gatorg has been summoned again, so we're going to add and discard Zephyros here to prepare ourselves for the Atum combos with Darkness Metal. And then we're going to Synchro with the Ducks and the Phalanx into Dragoon Knight Vajrayana in the extra monster zone. Now that's going to equip Phalanx, and then Phalanx is going to get special summon back from your graveyard. And then you're going to be able to overlay the Gatorg and the Vajrayana into your Hieratic Dragon King of Atum. Now you're going to use your Atum to special summon Darkness Metal from the deck, so you're still a you're still able to overlay two Synchros into your Atum, but literally you can't do it with Instant Fusion or Garuda. You have to do it with Soul Charge, bringing back Gatorg after you've gotten rid of it once already. But so you're going to bring out the Darkness Metal from your deck off the Atum, and then Darkness Metal's effect is going to be used to bring back the Gatorg from your graveyard. But you're not going to use its effect yet for a very specific reason. Because at this point, Gatorg wants to, you want to be adding and discarding another Baby Rock here. But at the same time, if you do that, you're going to clog your field up because we need to remove this Atum from the extra monster zone before we can progress. And so what we're going to do is that after we've used Darkness Metal to special summon Gatorg, you're going to bounce the Darkness Metal to your hand to summon Zephyros. And now from here, if you had added and discarded another Baby Rock here to where you had two on the field, your field would be clogged and your turn would end because you would not have a space to summon this Darkness Metal. But because you've waited, you can banish the Atom that you have in your extra monster zone, and you can summon your Darkness Metal. And your Darkness Metal is going to go into your main monster zone and be completely fine. Now from here, you may be wondering, what, what's our next step here? Next step is just to Synchro Ladder up the way we used to with old Dragoony combos. You're going to Synchro with the Vajrayana and the Phalanx, or the, uh, the Zephyros and the Phalanx. I don't know why I've been calling Zephyros Vajrayana a lot recently. Uh, I've just been doing that. That's that's not even a thing I've been doing on video. It's a thing I've been doing a lot in real life. I'll just be like, Vajrayana effect. It's like, oops. Uh, but So you'll make Vajrayana with Zephyros and Phalanx, and you'll re-equip Phalanx from Grave, and then you will special summon the Phalanx. And now it doesn't matter which one you Synchro with, but you want to Synchro one of your tuners with the Vajrayana. You can leave the Phalanx out uh, just to be more thorough in case like you have a Garuda later on and you want to do some shit. Uh, but like it's it's very subjective, but so you synchro those into your second Cyframe Lord Omega into your extra monster zone And then you're going to banish that Omega as well Now from here this Gator has not used its effect and this darkness metal has not used its effect since it's been back on the field So you're going to use Gator's effect and you are going to add and discard a Miss Valley baby rock yet again So you're going to add this card and discard it and then you are going to special summon it back to your field And now from here you're going to synchro with these two cards. Hell yeah! You're going to Synchro with the Gatorg and the Miss Valley Baby Rock into your third Cyframe Lord Omega in the extra monster zone. Then you're going to use Cyframe Lord Omega as effect to banish itself, take a card out of your opponent's hand. So at this point you have three floating Omegas, you've taken three cards out of your opponent's hand, they are on two cards, they will be drawing to three, and you still have a Darkness Metal effect that you haven't used. So you're going to activate dark, uh, the Darkness Metal's effect, and you're going to special summon the Gatorg back from your graveyard yet again. Now at this point, you've only gone through two Baby Rocks. So you could, in theory, add and discard another one, but the thing is, you don't want that card just, you know, just being on your field. Why? Because you've got three Cyframe Lord Omegas that are going to be trying to come back next turn. You want all of these cards to have a space to come back into your main monster zone. So you want to make sure that your field is completely clear of any obstructions. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the Gator here to actually gain an additional combo piece for your next turn. In the form of adding a card that we haven't played in a while. You're going to add Harpy Harpist from your deck to your hand, and then discard it to your graveyard. The reason being is that we're just trying to get extra cards here, right? We're trying to extend the reach of our combos, uh, and trying to ensure what we have going does not stop going, essentially. Uh, but so then from there, after you've added and discarded Harpy Harpist, you can synchro with your Gaederg and your Phalanx, into either Stardust Dragon or Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, but it's going to be in your extra deck monster zone. Now, you can do Crystal Wing. Crystal Wing is probably the safest bet. Stardust is the card that is probably going to be the most, like, longevitous for you because of the fact that it can negate things that destroy things, um, and that would be, like, pretty good for you, I would imagine. 
Especially since it would negate something that could destroy something and then come back to your main monster zone, vacating your extra monster zone. Uh, but Crystal Wing, in a uh, in a simplified game state of your opponent only having three cards to their name when they draw for turn, Crystal Wing is just generically a bit better. So Crystal Wing is just probably what you want to be going with for that. But Crystal Wing will take up your extra egg monster zone, and then at the end of your turn, you will then search for another Dragoonity Ducks to just be ready to go next turn so that you don't have to rely on Dragon Ravine. Or if you did this entire combo with like some weird combination that didn't involve Dragon Ravine, like Ducks Divine Lance Soul Charge or Ducks Foolish Soul Charge, you get to add another Ducks to your hand to guarantee a play next turn. Uh, now you won't be able to make Vajrayana unless this leaves the extra monster zone, but I mean you have this to apply pressure if it does. And then you've already, you know, taken three cards out of your opponent's hand with these three Cyframe Lord Omegas, which will be returning during the next turn. Uh, so you do gain quite a lot of advantage off of this uh, stuff because your Omegas come back. Uh, so you have three Omegas that just comes back to the field. You've got the Ducks in your hand. So you, you've ended with a substantial amount of momentum in the game state and, you know, a good amount of cards as well. Now, Omega being a f like a floating, just big bastard... Uh, it's definitely one of the best assets of this deck uh, that you should probably be like relying on and focusing on going into the future. Like Omega is most definitely probably the future of this deck in general, just because you're just able to just use it and get it out of the zone. And like that's the biggest thing that this deck has hurdles with when Link format hits is the fact that you know you you need to be able to on demand vacate your extra monster zone, either that or make a Link monster that gives you two extra zones to be able to overlay or like synchro into but omega bypasses this so this is a card that definitely becomes like the bread and butter of how this deck operates in the future because of the fact that you have combos like this or the mistleton combo where like the mistleton combo can summon one of these and a crystal wing or can just summon two omegas take two cards out of your opponent's hand and then just have a constant string of floaters um like there's there's a few different things that like you have capabilities of there uh, that ultimately like lead Omega to being the future of this deck, unfortunately. Uh, it's definitely not something I thought was going to be the case, but it pretty much is. But anyway, that's basically been it for this combo. Like you, like I said, this combo is pretty cool. It's Ravine Flank Soul Charge, you end with a Crystal Wing, a Darkness Metal, a Ducks in hand. So you have four cards here, so you've already gotten just a generic plus one. But then you have three floating Omegas. So I guess technically it is a plus four because of the fact that these come back next turn. Now your opponent gets their cards back as well. Uh, but the thing is, is, like, you gained these cards, and they didn't gain anything from those cards being banished and those cards coming back. Uh, so, like, these were cards that you gained, so it still counts as, like, a plus. Uh, so there's that. And this card's just generically really hard to deal with. <laughs> like, holy shit. Uh, but anyway... That is it for this combo tutorial. That is it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought, like, think and what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I don't really... I hope that this isn't, like, the only way this deck is playable in Link format. But it might just be the case until we get, like I said, a good generic Link 2 that points downward towards your main monster zones to unlock further potentialities. Because, I mean, shit. You could just put two of those monsters into one of the things we made into an Omega. Like... We've literally put two monsters into three different monsters that we just removed from the field. Like, it would be really easy for us to you know, use links to some sort of capacity if we had generic link twos that allow us to unlock things a bit easier. But, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. If you want to get access to some private things like my private discord server and some reward tiers and stuff like that then definitely go check that out if you want to chat with me on a 24 7 basis and a few other people that are also awesome and helpful that are in my discord server then definitely go check out the reward tiers there and see if there's anything to your liking or if you just want to support the channel and help some things that i've got as far as projects for the future lined up that i just need some a little bit better financial stability to be able to make happen then definitely go check that out as well if you want to show your support for uh, for something that you like but anyway other than that if you like this video smash that like button thumbs this video up show your support for all the stuff that i'm doing that you enjoy content wise if you're new here and want to be a part of the community this big clusterfuck of a nonsense that i didn't think was possible a few years ago then definitely consider subscribing if you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content and i would definitely love to welcome you to this little dysfunctional family we've got going on here led by yours truly but anyway again that is it for this video again thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual guys let me know what your thoughts are again in the comments down below and take care i will see you in the next video